In this series of lectures, we're going to talk about a few different ways of representing circuits as matrices. The most important of these for RF and microwave are called the S parameters, but we're also going to talk about Z parameters first and mention a few others in passing. We like to use these methods because we can reduce a linear endpoint network into a matrix, and often it's easier to analyze that way, especially by hand. So the first kind of matrix we'll look at is called the Z parameters, or impedance parameters, as you might guess. The simplest case is a one port system. So if what's inside this blob is a linear network, we know that it obeys the usual Ohm's law for current and voltage. In this case, the one port case, we can represent the impedance by a single complex value, which we'll call Z11 in this case. Let's extend this to a linear N port network. The voltage at a given port is going to be a sum of contributions from currents at that port and all the other ports. If the network is linear, we can use superposition. By convention, currents go into the network. Now we can write expressions for the voltages at each port as a function of the currents and impedances inside the linear network. At a given port, the total voltage is a superposition of the voltages created by the current coming into each port, interacting with some impedance inside the network. For example, at port 1, we have voltage V1, which is made up of current I interacting with Z11, plus the current into port 2 interacting with Z12, and so on until the current I n interacting with z 1 n. We can write a similar expression for v2, except you notice that i1 interacts with z21, and i2 interacts with z22, and so on. And of course you can keep writing similar expressions up to port n. Now this looks like a linear system of equations, which it is, and we can rewrite it as a matrix equation. We write the voltages and the currents as column vectors, and all the z's become a matrix. And this matrix is the z parameters, or the z matrix. So this turns out to be kind of a, you can think of it as like a higher dimensional form of Ohm's law. If we write it as Z equals, or V equals ZI, then we can multiply on both sides by the inverse of Z. And if we define this new parameter Y, as the inverse of Z, this matrix is the Y parameters, or the admittance parameters. Once you get Z or Y, you can solve for any situation of voltages and currents on the network. The matrix contains everything that you need. So that's great, but how do you actually solve for the Z matrix. So it's kind of straightforward. For each Z matrix element, the row index is the port where voltage is measured, and the column index is where current is applied. And you leave, you can think of it as leaving all the ports open except the one receiving current. For example, Z11 
is equal to the voltage at port 1 divided by the current into port 1 under the conditions that all the other ports are left open so there's no current. So conceptually we've got a test current attached to port 1. We can also solve for Z21 which is the voltage at port 2 divided by the current into port 1 with no current going into any other ports. So you can see that for a given test current you can get a column of the Z matrix. We can write a general expression for the matrix element ZNM. It's going to be the voltage at port N over the current going into port M. And the requirement is that there's no current going into any other port. So conceptually what you're doing is moving around this test current and looking at the resulting voltages. Next time we'll talk about Z, uh, S parameters, and after that we'll look at some examples.